Um, I, I've been thinking about something. I wanted to do some videos about my life, things that's happened. Uh, mainly because I've been thinking, I wish I knew about the early years of my grandfather and my grandmother on both sides, my paternal and paternal. Of course, I don't, I don't know about it, but I thought I would do some videos in chronological order starting from my earliest memories. The first memories I can actually remember. Oh. Uh, and I guess that's going to be starting in about 1944. Well, I know it's 1944, my earliest memories, and I'll have a couple of photos of this time in my life. Oh. Uh, but I can remember 1944. Uh, we lived in Norfolk, Virginia, and World War II was going on, and my dad worked at a shipyard building these uh, Liberty ships uh, for the war effort. And, uh, but we lived in Norfolk, Virginia, and we lived in Broad Creek Village. And that was a housing area, and you'll see a couple of photos of this, that, uh, Uh, the address, I can remember the address. It was 1331 North Woodlawn Avenue. And this was a housing development in there. Uh, it was actually apartments. Um, so I can remember the first one we lived on, and that was on Blue Ridge Street, but I can't remember the house number. And Mama had another baby. Uh, my, I'm not sure. I think it was when Michael, When Michael was born in, I think, 48, and we had to move to a bigger apartment, which was uh, 1331 North Woodlawn Avenue. Uh, but I can remember 1944. Uh, I and it was, uh, we have this family reunion thing that's been going on ever since 1936. They had to skip this year. It was Labor Day weekend every time, and we had to skip this year because of the COVID-19 thing. So that's the first one that's not been kept in all those years. But I can remember... <sighs> Uh, 1944, I don't remember, and we had to go to Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina, that's where the family reunion was at, and I guess it was about 100 miles, maybe longer than that, uh, 
and daddy didn't have a car we didn't have a family car or anything uh i don't remember getting on the train uh, i just don't remember getting on the train i remember being on the train and I remember getting off the train in the Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. And I remember I had a little, little kid sailor suit on. Um, uh, I remember getting off the train and then I remember walking down the sidewalk and all of a sudden mama and daddy and carolyn and george was gone uh i i got i i, I lost them <laughs> uh and i remember walking around and i kept turning around in a circle looking for them couldn't see them and I remember them finding me. Um, I gotta watch my dog. Um, and then I remember getting to my granddaddy's house, granddaddy's and grandmama's house. And we were staying in there and I remember parts of the family reunion. Um, but that, that, that little segment there is all I can remember about that particular time. I remember getting, going back home. We had to go on the train again. Bailey, Bailey. Bailey, I remember going back home. Um, and then that Christmas of '44, um, uh, I remember, I remember getting back on the train. No, this time it wasn't a train, it was the bus. It was a Greyhound bus. And it's not a long, it wasn't a long trip, maybe an hour or two. And I remember going down the highway, you know, and that was before the interstates, you know, and everything. And just seemed like going down the road uh, you could look out the window and see houses you know all decorated and some of them was lit up um, for Christmas now it's like somebody throw a switch and I can't remember nothing after that uh, 44 hours, what, uh, four years old? Let's see. I was born in March of 41, so 42, 43. All right, this is just some pictures uh, of my family in 1944 uh, the, th these were at our family reunion and this is the one where I got lost when we got off the train um, this next next uh, batch of photos is of Broad Creek Village this is where we lived um, for several years, or actually we lived there when my mom and dad separated. Now the people in these Broad Creek Village photos are just neighbors. Uh, 
The last photo is, you can see my house in the background on the left there. Uh, like I was saying, it, it seemed like I just sort of switched in my mind to something. I can't remember nothing after that till I was seven years old. Which would have been, uh... 48 Boy, <laughs> I gotta count on my fingers again uh, it would have been 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48 it would have been 1948 and by that time mama done had another baby so there was five of us there's myself, my sister, which is a year younger than me, and George, my brother. Uh, and uh, Michael and Joe, there was five of us. In 1948, I was seven, and I remember, now my grandmother, Pearson, my dad's mom, she was a Seventh-day Adventist, staunch Seventh-day Adventist. And she was insisting that we go to a private Seventh-day Adventist school. So I remember the pastor coming out to the house, which was in Broad Creek Village still. Uh, the pastor of the church, Seventh-day Adventist church, oh, uh, talking to me, you know, and about going starting the school over there at the Seventh-day Adventist School, and I remember that. Now, after that, I can't remember anything till about 1950. We was going to the Seventh Day Adventist School, and uh, I remember one day I, we rode the, we rode the school bus to the school, and I got to the school bus late to stop, and at that time it was just. It was me and uh, me and Carolyn and George was going to the school. I, I was about second or third grade. George was in the first. Carolyn was uh, second, and I think I was the third. And I missed. I missed the bus. I, I got there late. George and Carolyn got there on time, and they got on the bus. By the time I got there, the bus said, all right, I seen the bus leaving. So I took it upon myself to walk to school. I didn't want to miss school. Now, I don't know how far it was, but... Uh, the only way I knew to how to get to that school was the way the school bus went. Now, if I'd have went the closest way to go, it would have only been about three miles. But turns out, I went. I, I followed the school bus route. That was about five or six miles but I walked the whole thing and I got there probably a little after lunch time dinner time but I got there <laughs> I got there and they was having lunch that well I just had lunch <laughs> but I, I sure enough got there <laughs> daddy thought that was funny 
Um, but I, I remember that well. And we, we went to that school up until Mother's Day of 1951. And that's when Mama left my dad. Uh, he, he was an alcoholic and he was drunk, passed out on the floor. And of course, right at that particular time, I didn't know Mama was having an affair with another man. And that's, that's when she picked, loaded us all up in her boyfriend's car. And in the middle of the night, and we went to um, Roanoke Rapids. She first tried to drop me and Carolyn and George off at her mother's and my grandmother's, uh, my maternal grandmother's. Uh, house and my maternal grandmother jumped all over her and you you going you ain't leaving these kids with nobody you're taking them with you so she left there where, and they drove across town to my grandmother Pierce and my paternal grandparents and she didn't go to the door and ask her to take the three of us and she was taking the two youngest ones Michael, Michael and uh, Joe. Uh, she, uh, she had. We had little paper bags with some clothes in it, and she put us out of the car and told us to go up there and knock on the door. So off we went to grandmother's door, and that must have been about three or four o'clock in the morning. And we knocked on the door, and Grandmama come to the door, and quick as Grandmama opened that door, Mama and Bob and them two babies took off. We didn't see them no more till uh, probably three years, something like that. But she, 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 I always refer to it. She abandoned us on the side of the road. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't the side of the road. It was a little bit off the road. But that's where she dumped us. Uh, and Daddy tried to take care of us. I can't remember much about how he did that other than we went back to our house at 1331 North Woodlawn Avenue. And we was left alone a lot. And he was out drinking or something. I don't know what he was doing. But somehow or another, before he left the house, he, he smoked. And a cigarette or something got dropped on the, on the couch or the sofa, or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> And it caught on fire. Well, it sat there and smoldered. The smoke was coming out of the house. It's a wonder we hadn't died from smoke inhalation, you know. Uh, but we got woke up. The fire department was there. And we got woke up. We was by ourselves. And, um... They, um, they wound up taking us to, uh, I don't know if it was a foster home, I don't know, but we went to somebody's house. They took us there, and we stayed there about a week before Daddy got us back. Oh. Uh, and that, that's when... The three of us, my sister and myself and my next oldest, my oldest brother, youngest brother that's closest to me in age, uh, we, we started getting 
Aunt Rosa May took George. Uh, and me and Carolyn, we was passed around from one aunt and uncle to the next aunt and uncle, and uh, uh, and, and I remember, you know, back then, divorce wasn't a big, that wasn't fondly looked upon, you know. We was referred to as Russell's, poor Russell's kid, or Russell's poor kid, something like that. I remember somebody saying that. Um, but we spent a lot of time working on the farms and stuff. My, all my aunts and uncles, well, not all of them, all of them but one. One was a, married to a, a, a Methodist minister. But all the rest of them had farms. Huh. And I, I remember some, I was missing my mama. I mean, I was, I was 10 years old. And I remember working on some of the farms, you know, and back then we had to get out there and chop cotton and chop peanuts, meaning that you're out there chopping along the rows, chopping out the weeds. And I used to fantasize about when I'd see a car coming down the old dirty road, dusty uh, road, the little kind of a reddish. What is that? Is that John Travolta's point? No, I think John Travolta's in. That might have been John Travolta's plane. You don't see jets go over here that low. That's it's going over there to uh, Jumbalair. That's where he has a house. But I thought he was in. I thought he moved back to California when his wife died. But it sure that that sure looked like it. Because that big of a jet can't land out here at the, at, at the Ocala Municipal Airport. Doesn't have a runway big enough. But out here where he lives, um, uh, that place was built because the man that developed that place, I forget what his name was, but he was very wealthy and he, got, he had a mile long uh, runway built out there. And people that's built houses in there, they all got planes and stuff. But John Travolta's the only one that had one of them big jetliners like that. Now, where was I at? Uh, and by the way, I've run in, uh, I haven't run into him, so to speak. I, I've, I've come up beside him, parked, at, uh, I was in the turn lane and he was in the going straight lane and sitting there and he was in a convertible. <laughs> and I, of course, I remembered him well from uh, Welcome Back, Back Cotter, and he was Benny Barbarino. And I started hollering, hey, Benny! <laughs> Benny Barbarino! <laughs> He just shook his head. I, I I guess he gets that. I don't know if he gets that a lot now or not, because it's been a long time since he was on Welcome Back, Carter. But now, what the heck was I talking about? I, uh, oh, my, I, when I'd see a car coming down the dirt road, the big field was over there beside the road, and I fantasize about it being my mama coming to get me. I wanted to be with my mama so bad. And I, I, guys, I don't know, I don't know if that was what I would call a traumatic experience for me when mama left me like that. I. I The only thing I know for sure is I miss Mama. 
and uh, I, I just did, you know, I don't, I don't know. But it was almost three years before I ever saw my mama again. And, um, let's see, I'm trying to get it straight in my head about the school. Uh, we would go back. Let's see. Daddy took us back to Norfolk and we went to school again under his care, me and me and Carolyn, but not George. Uh, Aunt Rosa May had George. She wanted to adopt George. I don't know why she never did. But George uh, lived with Aunt Rosa May. Uh, but when he took us back to Norfolk, uh, that's about when he found out where Mama was. And they had got a divorce and all that. Uh, she, how was that? Anyway, Mama, they, him, him and Mama got to talk, and I don't know how they was carrying on the conversation because I don't think she ever come back to Norfolk. Uh, but they was in Jacksonville, Florida, her and her second husband. Um, but it wound up, Daddy had a car then. It wound up then Daddy driving us to Jacksonville, Florida and turning us over to my mama. And that wasn't a good experience. I didn't like my stepfather. Bailey. Bailey. Bailey, do you hear me? Get back over here. Come on. Um, I didn't like my stepfather. He had this, he had this bad habit of, of, uh, if he didn't like something we done or something, he'd get in front of us and with that finger and punching us in the head. And, Do you understand me? And I mean, just, just laying it on you. Um, didn't like that, man. I, I liked him at one, one point in time. I liked, I started liking him. And I started thinking he's more of a dad to me than my own daddy was. But then I found out something that changed all that, and I won't discuss that in this particular video. But um, his name was Bob Polk, Ro Robert William Folks. And I used to rem remember the name of the college he went, but he went to college. He was a World War II vet. He was in the Navy, and he was in the South Pacific in World War II. Uh, and he had one child of his own, own that, with his first wife. But when when Mom and him took off, he, he abandoned his child, left it with his wife. And um, uh, me and that kid was in... We used to, my dog, I got to keep an eye on that dog, but uh, 
didn't didn't like him at first. They started out giving us 50 cents a week allowance. But after about a month or two, that that stopped. I don't know why it just stopped. Um, but they only had they only had two a uh, one bedroom apartment, and it was upstairs. And me and Carolyn had to sleep on the couch. And then he had two babies, Robert and Donna. Didn't have our yet. They had three kids together. But the two babies were sleeping in cribs. Bailey. 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 She's done one around the side of the house. Anyway, that's the earliest part of my life. Um, but that one one bedroom apartment, we had to move. And we had to move. He didn't have a car then for some reason. And we had to move to a bigger uh, apartment. And I'll have a picture of this in this video too. But it was, it was not meant to be two apartments upstairs, but they had made it into two apartments. And we were share, having to share, the two apartments had to share the same bathroom. So I can remember. But when we moved, <laughs> we had to make, I don't know how many trips we had to make from Bennett Street to Iona Street. We, we moved to 1404 Iona Street. And uh, that, that no vehicle, a little red wagon, and I don't remember ever getting that red wagon as a Christmas gift or anything like that. I don't know where it come from, but I was pulling the wagon, and Mama and Mama and Bob was carrying a baby each, and we had the back red wagon packed up with clothes and stuff. Now I don't know. If that apartment was furnished, I can't remember. But I remember having to move our personal belongings and stuff on that little red wagon. And it was probably 20 blocks away from where we was living to where we was moving to. I well remember that. It was on, we, we were moving to Iona Street Fourth and I on the street. Fourth, fourth and I on them. It's right there on the corner. And Bennett Street was over on Eighth Street, down a few blocks, about twenty blocks. Anyway, that's the early part. Oh. And next video I'll pick up on word after we moved there to Iona Street and started going to Maddie V. Rutherford Elementary. And that went through the seventh grade. Um, but anyway, that's going to be it on this one. This is going to, I'm going to do maybe one or two of these a week right on up to right now, to the present. Um, I'm mainly doing this for my grandbabies 
because I, I have wondered a lot about what went on in my grandparents' life and my dad's early life. No record of it that I know of. So maybe one day my, my babies, my grandbabies will want to look at this and see. Uh, so, um, that's what I'm going to do in chronological order. Maybe it's Dauber's Chronicles. <laughs> I don't know. But that's it. What does that say there? I, I never paid any attention to that screen on. Oh, that's a timer. I've been talking 25 minutes and 48, 49, 50, 51 seconds. <laughs> and it's, oh, and it shows how much space I got on my SD card. And it shows how much my battery's about half gone. So, you know, this thing will only record about an hour on that battery, on one battery. I don't know why I never paid any attention to that. I didn't know what it's saying, but there it is, setting the time. It's now at 26, 26 minutes and 31 seconds. <laughs> this is a picture of that house I'm talking about, and upstairs there is where we live, but the, it's, it's a picture of the way it appears today. It's It's been re renovated it looks a lot nicer now than it did back then but that was 1404 on the street and our door you can't see it but right behind that column there is uh where <laughs> our door was how about that uh, oh and i have to warn you there's gonna be some really uh there's going to be some tough times in my life. There's going to be some good times. There's going to be some sad times. So, anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, <laughs> I'm so out of brain. Um, GoPro, stop recording. <laughs>